Pokemon Gold and Silver was where it all began when Game Freak introduced us with shiny Pokemon. Which is exactly why today I will try to beat Pokemon Heart Gold with only shiny Pokemon. And of course, to make things way easier, we have Omar the Jigglypuff with the ability Q Charm. Now let's go and catch them all. Whoa, what the heck? Really? <laughs> Okay, that wasn't part of my plan. Where the hell am I? I still have Omar. What the f- In today's video, I'm gonna be playing through the Teal Mask DLC with shiny Pokemon from the Johto region. But this time we have Nuzlocke rules. So if a Pokemon faints during this run, I can never use them again. Once I've arrived at Kitakami, the first thing I did was shiny hunt my favorite Pokemon from Johto. And that's Wooper. Wooper is just amazing. And I had to have it as my first shiny Pokemon. I'm also allowing myself to make shiny sandwiches because it's an option. I got no shiny charm. So I was wondering when the shiny will pop up. Yo, is that it? Yo, shiny Wooper. Yo, hey, get this sh off, get off. Shiny Wooper! I was expecting it to take so long! Oh my goodness, I was able to notice that right away. You get over here, you little rascal. And there it is, the Shiny Wooper. It's a female too! Here we go, Shiny Wooper is caught. First shiny of our team, that's insane. With Pinky Wu being our first member of our team, I also went for a shiny Yanma. I had a little suspicion that Pinky Wu won't make it through the first battle alone, and you won't believe how this hunt turned out. Yo, shiny Yanmega! What? Two shiny, what? Two shiny Yanmega? What the heck? Why is there two shiny Yanma? I need to catch them right now. Get the ball, please. I don't want this one to go away. Please. Yes, we got one. Okay, now we have to get the other one. Now we have to get the other one. <laughs> Are you serious, two Yanmega? Not Yanma. God dang, I keep saying Yanmega. <laughs> I got two shiny Yanma right next to each other. Unbelievable. This was the first time something like this has ever happened to me. However, I'm not allowed to have two of the same shiny Pokemon, so one of them has to be left behind. I chose Zing and left Zing in the box waiting for Zing's return. Now that I have two shiny Pokemon, I think it's finally time to move on to our first battle. Against a trainer named Carmine. Can't let an outsider like me wander in your town. The f is that supposed to mean? Carmine challenges us to a battle and sends out Poochyana. For the lead, I went for Zing, our shiny blue bug type. I got Zing to use the move Pounce that damages the opponent, but lowers their speed as well. But it didn't matter, since Zing is already that fast, destroying her Poochyana. She then sends out Vulpix, giving me an opportunity to swap in Pinky Woo. Pinky Woo may not look strong, but Boldo says a lot about Pinky Woo's true power. Vulpix had to disable our move because of that, but it didn't matter, as Pinky Woo uses Mudshot to take it out. And now Carmine's last Pokemon comes out. Geist. I immediately swap Pinkaboo with Zing to face off against her last Mon. Yo, and it doesn't matter. It did not matter. Get that Geist out of here. After our battle, the old man walks out of the building scaring both Carmine and her brother away, letting us continue the game the next morning. We now have to find ourselves a partner to look for the three signs that tell a story about the lurking ogre in Kitakami. Ever since Kieran saw our battle with Carmine, he also would like to battle us. So I decided to just bully his Pokemon by using Double Team. And good thing I did. Yo, Yanma versus Yanma. Let's go. They look so cool together. Go Zing, you Swift. Cut through the wind. Wait, what? You have a flying type move? Air Cutter? Oh, oh my God. Oh my God, Zing almost died. How do you have Air Cutter? I don't even have Air Cutter. I am so glad I put the double team up. That was unexpected. What the heck? <laughs> Dude, that's so unfair. His Yanma had Air Cutter. After defeating the two annoying siblings, I am finally free to roam wherever I want to catch more shiny Pokemon from Johto. And surprisingly enough, Kurin was using one I didn't have yet. Sentry is just adorable, and how could you not get it shiny? I made a tofu sandwich and got the shiny hunting. Just remember guys, I don't have a shiny charm in this run, so make sure to please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It'll make my hours and pain worth it. There it is, there it is, 
shiny sentry. Oh my goodness. You can definitely tell that is shiny. For sure that's shiny. Right in the heel ball you go. There it is. With me being our third member and our shiny sandwich still going, I went to the other side of Kitakami for a chance to get both shiny standard and an Apom. I never got them in that sandwich. I thought I was content with the Pokemon I already have until I ran into one of the greatest Pokemon from Johto. Whoa, what? What the heck? Wait a minute, if you're here, then that means I gotta do this right now. You have no idea how cool this would be. Of course I'm gonna be shiny hunting a Pokemon that's in my top 10 favorites. If I somehow miss the shiny by me not looking at the right direction, I am, yeah, that's just sad. Yo, and all right as I said that, right as I said that, I get the shiny hair across. What the heck? Shiny hair across is so dope. I can at least get it to yellow. Don't do crit. Zing, zing. Oh, oh. Okay, we're fine. We just gotta get it in the heel ball, please. Get in the heel ball. Uh oh. Just get in the heel ball. I lowered your HP for a reason. It keeps using arm thrust. Stop using arm thrust. Guys, I'm gonna have to do it. No, you know what? I am the upcoming shiny hunter. I am not getting it in the net ball. Heel ball all the way, please. <laughs> Critical capture? No way with me. Yes. Yes. What did I tell you? What did I tell y'all? Oh my god, that was so close. Okay, now I'm content with the squad. I let them play a little bit of soccer, then went to read the first signboard that tells us about the mysterious ogre. It said that this ogre has came into the village with rage, causing such a havoc to be stopped by three Pokemon called the Loyal Three. They earned that name by defending the town, giving us the shrine that we see today in Kitakami. Even so, Kieran thinks that the ogre is pretty cool, which is kind of concerning even though it mentions it causing havoc, but I didn't pay any mind. Kieran then went ahead to the second signboard. While I was driving over there, I ran into Professor Jack that wanted to surprise us with a secret Pokemon egg. Could this be an egg from the Johto region? Oh boy. Bro, what the hell are you wearing? I hope I never get to wear that. Oh, what the heck? My egg is already hatching. Dude, please be a Magni. Please be an Elekid. Actually, a Togepi would so save this run. <laughs> uh, yeah, goodbye. <laughs> we make our way to the second signboard that now tells us about the four masks the ogre owns that are now kept at this red house safe away from the ogre. Kieran then tells us about the cave on top of the Oni Mountain, where the ogre lives. And I guess I'm being forced to go since that's the point of the video. But something amazing just happened before that. Oh, wait, what? Wait, already? Wait, I actually didn't know it evolves at level 15. What the heck? Yo, shiny ferret. Yo, there we go. Do the walk. Come on, do it. Do the thing. Do the thing. Yes. Yes, do the thing. This was so worth it. Oh my gosh. With Meep evolving, we have a party of pink shiny Pokemon, aside from Zing, of course. But I love this team so far. Once we headed to the mountain, Kieran immediately wanted to have a rematch with us. Kieran sends out his first Pokemon, Poliwag. While I send out Beast, our bug fighting type, Poliwag goes for the move Haze that doesn't do anything to us at all. So I went for the move Lunge, almost knocking out the Poliwag in one turn. Even so, it's just a polywag, so we're able to take it out. Yeah, that water gun was just a car wash. <laughs> I swapped Beast with Zing to prepare for its rival. Ever since the first battle with Kieran, I got rid of double team since it seems pretty cheap afterwards. So from this point on, no double team. Let's see if we can defeat you this time. Oh, God, we almost killed it. If you take me out and we get the flinch off, oh my goodness. I am not risking it. I am doing a swift. There is no way. I didn't let me fight its own rival in battle. It didn't last long since I was intimidated by the move dig. I sent Zing back out to use double air slashes while Furt uses defense curl. Looking back at this, I don't know why I sent Meep back out, but I want to show Kieran who has the better Pokemon. We're gonna take the dig. Oh, let's go. Send headbutt. Get him down. Let's go. Meep for the win. The second battle against Kieran is our victory. Our team was too strong compared to Kieran's. We head inside the cave for a while, then get invited by Kieran to visit his house. Screw 
for that, I'm getting more shiny Pokemon. Since we only have four members, it wouldn't hurt if we just had a full team of six shiny Pokemon, right? When we were heading up the mountain, I found a specific Pokemon that will help us on our journey, and that's Bonsly. Uh, Mark, don't you know that Bonsly is getting four Pokemon? I know you wouldn't fun with a bag in this video. You're such a faker. Okay, dude, relax, all right? If you don't know this already, Bonsly can evolve to a Pokemon called Sudowoodo. And where did Sudowoodo get discovered? Exactly. You can't stop me from getting the shiny Bonsly. Oh, yo, there it is. Shiny Bonsly! Yeah, let's go. Great capture. I'm gonna name you Coco. I will say this one thing. After I got the Shiny Bonsly, I kept on grinding and feeding it berries to increase its friendship. Why, you may ask? Cause I'm stupid. For two whole hours, I was trying to increase Bonsly's friendship when the entire time it had to learn the move Mimic that I refused for it to learn two hours ago. I've spent hours giving this guy friendship to realize I had to teach it Mimic the whole entire time. I am so pissed off. Now that I finally got my shiny Sudowoodo, I can start on the next shiny for our sixth member. And the next Pokemon is shiny Swinub. It definitely took some time because of lag, but eventually I found one. Oh, I thought it was a spin rack for a second. What the heck? <laughs> Dude, look at him. He's like a, such a little guy. Wind up so adorable. Get over here. There it is. I was wondering where it was. Let's go. Shiny Swine Up is now part of our team. We make our way to Kieran's house to meet his grandparents. They then mention an event called the Festival of Masks that we all plan on going when it turns nighttime. I'll get out some Jinbei for both of you so you can go to the festival all goosied up. Wait, what does that mean? We have to do your hair too. What? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait! Oh my fucking god. I hope I never get to wear that. What the hell did you do to me? What, what are you doing here? Who cares about why I'm here? What I want to know is why your damn grandma put that shit on me. Someone take this shit off. Afterwards, Carmine and Kieran went to find some masks, but they couldn't find one for me. So instead, Carmine decided to give me a battle. Carmine sends out more Petco as we try our new partner, Cookie. I couldn't think of a better name, okay? It's not shiny though. Oh, what the heck? Cookie almost just got one shot in. I returned Cookie to its Pokeball, swapping out with Coco, and was able to dodge more Petco's bite attack. However, we do get flinched the next turn. More Petco uses bite again, but this time we were able to land a huge hammer arm, taking out more Petco. Carmine then sends out Swadloon, as we send out Beast next, and with just one aerial lace, we one shot Swadloon. Mighty Anna was intimidating our Heracross, lowering its attack, but it was pointless when we just do good damage with Lunge, as he uses Howl. Carmine is such a bad trainer. I don't understand what Hal was gonna do there. And now her last Pokemon, Poltergeist, comes out. Zing, with no problem at all, was able to destroy Poltergeist with an Air Slash. Ending the battle. Four wins in a row. Holy, we got this in the bag. Both Kieran and Carmine put on their mask and started heading over to the festival. Looks like it's my turn to head over there too. Psych! If you guys aren't aware already, once you start the DLC, it takes over the time. Basically, this is the only time I'll be able to shiny on Hoohoo since it only spawns at night. And I am not losing that chance for I really want a shiny knocked out. You guys can't make me and that's final. I then make our way to the spot to find one of my favorite shinies in Pokemon history. Shiny yellow bird! Oh! <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I don't know why. Don't even ask me why I did that. The yellow bird is mine. What about a level ball? Come on. You should love a level ball. You suck. Oh, so close. Okay. It was the ultra ball. God dang it, Hoot Hoot. We're just going to name it Grief. Good grief. I went back to the starting area of Kitakami to shiny on a spinner rack I missed that would be part of our team. There it is. Heck yeah. Okay. That I can notice. Shiny Spinarak! I've been waiting to use this netball for such a long time just to catch the shiny Spinarak. After I caught the Spinarak, my Hoo Hoot started evolving to become a shiny Noctowl. Oh my god, shiny Noctowl is so beautiful. 
Since grief evolved, I decided to evolve my shiny spinner egg to an Ariados, and then evolve Pinky Woo into a Quagsire. Yeah! This is so cool! With everyone finally evolved, we can make our way to the festival. And I'm gonna be honest, this festival is pretty cool. I love how it glows at night, and of how it shows the booths that even show a Pokemon called Diplin to advertise their candy apples. It may not seem like much, but I'm gonna be honest, this was mainly what got me to do this video. I was then forced to do the Ogre Ustin minigame. To spot a creepy looking guy with a green ogre costume? Carmine scares it off though, and as soon as it jumped back up the stairs, its mass fell to the ground, revealing itself to be the ogre Pokemon, but unfortunately, it got away. I was just trying to give the mask back. And as soon as Kieran came by, Carmine wanted to hide the fact that we saw the ogre and lied to his face. Yeah, like that won't affect us in the future. The festival was now over to Carmine waking me up the next morning to talk with her grandpa. But first, let me fix my hair, bro. You got me fucked up. He then would tell us about the true story about the ogre. I'm not gonna get into detail because of how long this would be, but basically the little three are bad guys since they tried to steal Ogre Pond's masks and went ahead to beat them all up, but instead was seen as an evil ogre. Just a whole misunderstanding. And yet, they thought the little three was just defending them the whole time. Ogre Pond did not deserve any hatred, bro. We gave the teal mask to the old man, while me and Kieran head over to the last signboard, and by surprise, he wanted to battle us again. And it was about time, cause I am down for a battle. Kieran sends out his Yanma, while I show up my beautiful shiny Ariados. Its shiny is so satisfying. I had to switch Toxin with Coco to predict an Air Slash. Yeah, I totally didn't see that coming. It then uses Struggle Bug, letting us take down the Yanma with Rock Tomb. I send Toxin back out to face off against Furret. Furret uses Takedown, getting us to a scary amount of HP, as we use Infestation, so it'll take damage each turn. It didn't exactly go as planned though, so I had to swap out Toxin with Grief. Our shiny knocked out. What did I tell you guys? This shiny is awesome. We did, however, get Kieran's Furret against the corner, because all it's doing is lowering our attack with baby doll eyes, just to take itself out with Takedown. Good thing I got Reflect up. I let Pikachu have a turn in battle against Kieran's Poliwhirl. Poliwhirl uses Haze, which again, we don't have any stats up, while we use Bulldoze to lower its speed. On the third turn, it finally uses Water Pulse, but it was too late, as we take out Poliwhirl with Mudshot. And that wasn't his last Pokemon. Kieran has a new member, Diplin. So obviously, I switched to Knockdown. He used Air Slash, getting it to half HP. Diplin then uses Dragon Breath and gets the Paralysis first try. We were a part of the 30%. Diplin afterwards goes for a defense curl, getting greedy for a rollout, letting us take down the Diplin to win us the battle. Too bad for you, Kieran. You almost took out my Pokemon. Maybe next time. As the rain pours down Kieran's sadness, we went ahead and read the last signboard to take one last photo. The next morning came by and Carmine sent a messenger boy. Apparently the teal mask crystal has been chipped because of it falling down the stairs. So me and Carmine headed straight to the crystal pool to get the gem we needed to fix Ogre Pond's mask. Wait, I'm not diving down that pool. I ain't from around here. Whoa, what the heck? That ain't no Gyarados, I'll tell you that. This wild Milotic came out of nowhere to battle us disturbing its territory, and I don't blame it. This place seems pretty peaceful. Carmine takes it down, and we were able to grab the crystal thanks to Milotic having one. But things just got serious. Grandpa told us that Kieran ran off with the mask and is now at the Loyalty Plaza. Yeah, this is why you don't hide things from people. We head on over to Kieran raging over how he kept Ogre Pond a secret from him, which I did, but it was mostly your sister's fault. Of course, nothing we said would get him to give us the mask, so we fought over with another battle. Kieran sends out Yanma again, while I had Beast up front. What is up with me not learning my lesson with Yanma? I swap in Coco to tank Air Cutter. Kieran, however, learned from our last battle. Bug Buzz! Oh my goodness! I really thought it was going to be like last time. Kieran has also caught a new Pokemon, Cramorant. And I have no Pokemon that can help us in this battle. So I sent out Pinky Woo, hoping to tank the Surf that unfortunately got us to 30 HP. I then swapped the Grief, surviving the Surf for it to fall asleep. Once I used Extra Sensory, it barely did any damage to the Cramorant. I used Air Slash instead each turn. To stay asleep for one more turn? Oh no! No, Grief! Are you kidding me? No! 
Once grief was taken out, I knew that I was in huge trouble. I sent Meep into battle to use Quick Attack to remove Cramorant off the field. Then Kieran sent out Poliwhirl, while I sent out Beast. You guys are like level 28, what is going on? Beast and Poliwhirl are going face to face with each other, even with Poliwhirl being level 28. However, please tell me that was enough to survive. Oh my gosh, I live! Beast lives! Oh, thank goodness. We survived liquidation. Thanks to Beast using Pounce. I knew this move was gonna come in handy. And now for Kieran's next Pokemon, Gligar. Meep was also putting in the work with Facade. I am so happy to have Quick Attack. Please be enough. No! He also had Quick Attack. Oh. Meep was also taken down. I then sent in Toxin to defeat Gligar, but Shadow Sneak was not enough for one turn. Toxin takes some damage, then knocks out the Gligar. And now for Kirin's final Pokemon. Diplin uses Defense Curl, while I use Infestation. I then fail to poison Diplin with Poison Sting, but our Infestation is putting in the work. And it just keeps stacking up Defense Curls! I had no choice but to Shadow Sneak it, so then let Toxin faint by Dragon Breath. I send Beast back out to outspeed the Diplin, winning us the battle. We won the battle, but with what cost? Three of our shiny Pokemon have been taken out by Kirin himself. I truly let my guard down after seeing how easy his team was getting. That's what I get for underestimating him. Which means these Pokemon are now unusable and will remain here in Poke Heaven. Rest in peace to these shiny Pokemon. Even grief, bro! I was gonna go through the entire game with him, man! But the run wasn't over yet. After Kirin punches the Loyal Plaza, he gives back the Teal Mask and runs off. When something mysterious happened. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on there. What the heck? Oh my god! Bro, what kind of eternity scene is this? Who the heck are they? Not only is the Loyal Plaza Shrine destroyed, but they somehow have been resurrected. Wait, hold up, where do y'all think you're going? Oh, that doesn't seem good. This is bad. I'm saying this right now, any droppings we so happen to find on the floor, I am not picking them up. But with the loyal three roaming around Kitakami, I'm going to grind some levels and catch some new shinies for us. Cause if we have to face these Pokemon in battle, I am not taking a chance at luck. I grinded up some levels, then went to the Infernal Pass to shiny hunt for two specific Pokemon, a shiny Slugma and a shiny Houndour. But shiny hunting for a Slugma sucks so much. I don't know who decided to make this area almost the exact same color as Shiny Slugma, but whoever it is, Game Freak, fire them. I have never been stressed out over a Shiny so similar to the ground. I almost couldn't even see it. I almost missed it. Are you serious? If I would have not looked ahead, I would have been, oh my gosh. There we go, jeez, man. With Shiny Slugma off of our list, Houndar was next and I was able to find the Shiny so easily. After 10 minutes at least. At this time, I went ahead and made some food for myself, not realizing Shiny Houndar was right next to me the whole time. Oh, wait, how long was the Shiny there? What the? Are you kidding me? I just got back and the shiny's here. How you doing, little doggy? Oh my god. I was AFK for at least a minute because I wanted to heat up some chicken nuggets. Okay, I'll give you a chicken nugget if you get in the scrape ball. Nope. Oh my god, I was gonna say. Two chicken nuggets if you get in the grape ball? No! No? Four nuggets. Yes! That's more like it. Four nuggets it is. <laughs> I am very happy! Just to make up for it, I evolved Microwave immediately to a Houndoom. I never thought I would have this Pokemon with me, but its shiny really does make it less intimidating. But now I'm prepared and ready to continue the DLC. To find our way to the Ogre Pond's cave, where he's getting beat up by the Pokemon. And without Ogre Pond's mask, it's defenseless. So I decided to become the hero. Monkey Dory steps up front to battle against us. And I had Microwave as our answer to these Pokemon. Monkey Dory uses Clear Smog and Microwave uses Bite to defeat Monkey Dory. Its other two buddies weren't happy about it. Well, wait, why are y'all jumping me now? Come on. And to my rescue, Carmine scares them off to not only save me, but Ogre Pond as well even though I technically did all the work. Kieran then attempts to apologize to us about what happened earlier. You killed three of my friends. I will never forgive you. 
We give the mask back to Ogre Pond and with the loyal three gone, we have to find them again and take back the masks that were stolen from Ogre Pond. And now Ogre Pond can follow us around. Look how adorable it is. Pinky Woo knows what's up. It's selfie time. Okay, okay, we're getting somewhere. Hey, we're getting somewhere. Yeah, get in the picture. Are you serious right now? We make our way back to the village and Ogre Pond is still afraid to go past the bridge. Since all the people hate him, which they are evil for that, Kwame then splits us up to find clues about where the little three could have went. We grouped up again and were able to track them all down. But I'm gonna be completely honest, I didn't know which one to go for first. So I made a poll for you guys to decide which Pokemon is better. And after one night, it has been decided that Pheasantipity was the best one out of the three. And since it's the best one, we will save it for last. That means Monkey Dory will be our first target. We cannot let them have the masks. I even went ahead and finally evolved Cookie into a sick Pokemon, Piloswine. It is no longer minty flavored, but now banana flavored. We make our way to Monkey Dory with a little bit of a surprise. Whoa, what the heck? Dude, why is the monkey ginormous? Our battle with the Titan Monkey starts now. I send out Cookie to test out its strength now that it's a Piloswine. Monkey Dory uses Spite on us, while Morpeko uses Leer, which will help us with Cookie's Earthquake. Except we ended up fainting Carmine's Pokemon instead. Carmine sends out Mightyena. Monkey Dory uses Clear Smog on Mightyena, while it uses a strong bite attack, getting us in range to defeat Monkey Dory with one more Earthquake. And we take out Mightyena as well, okay. But it didn't matter, we defeat Monkey Dory. That was way easier than I thought. But now it's Okie Dogie's turn. There he is, oh my goodness. Look at that frames per second, <laughs> you saw that? For this battle, I had Microwave be in the lead. Why would I do something that stupid? Well, Microwave has the move Will-O-Wisp that will decrease your physical attack by 50%. Genius idea, am I right? Oh, I feel alive! Yeah, let's forget about Microwave almost fainting on me. But she's done her job. Now it's Zing's turn by using Air Slash against Okie Dogie. And it kept flinching it too. Basically the entire time I spammed Air Slash after Air Slash for Okie Dogie to be taken down by being burnt. That's mask number two, and only one more Pokemon remains. This Pokemon literally made us chase after it through this cave. Now it all comes down to if we can even beat this fake bird. One thing I know for sure, I can't lose here. I had Zing be in front of the team to use a specific move, but almost died to a wing attack. Why does it have that? My plan was to whittle it down with Struggle Bug to give us a safe battle, but this Pokemon will not let us. I was only able to pull one off and swap to Cookie out in battle. Cookie was able to take the wing attack and its dazzling gleam. I used Mudslap to give us a chance to dodge its attack and it worked. Except for more Peko though. Pheasantipity hit us both with another dazzling gleam, poisoning Carmine's Mightyena. I had no choice but to use Earthquake to do a good chunk of damage. Listen, her Mightyena was gonna faint anyway. Ochi Guys does help us out with its ability Hospitality, healing our Piloswine. I pay it back by using another Earthquake. I'm such a good teammate. But Carmine was genius, landing a Stun Spore on Pheasantipity. I couldn't let this chance go to waste. Guys, just believe in Pinky Woo. Just believe. Pinky Woo will put in the attack. Pinky Woo, please. Let's go. I knew you could do it. <laughs> Our first ever shiny Pokemon giving us the dub on the last member of the Loyal Three, avenging Ogre Pond from what happened years ago. Kieran comes by and asks us to bring Ogre Pond to the village. It sounded very risky, but we trusted Kieran for some reason. Even Ogre Pond was scared at first, but saw confidence in his eyes, following him to the village. It turns out, while we were fighting the Loyal Three, Kieran this whole time was telling all the villagers that the story of Ogre Pond was wrong, and that Ogre Pond is a nice Pokemon. All the villagers believed Kieran and apologized to Ogre Pond for what happened in the past. I will admit, this is a rare Kieran dub right here. After things have been settled with everyone, we took Ogre Pond back home to where it belongs in its cave. As we wave our goodbyes, Ogre Pond rushes right towards us, letting us know it wants to go with me instead. I'm sorry, little dude, but you're not from Johto. And Kieran was not having it. Even after all what Kieran has done, it wants to be the one to catch Ogre Pond, as it's been his lifelong dream to befriend it. So Kieran got us to settle this with one final battle. I had to choose carefully, because unlike last time, Kieran will have stronger Pokemon to fight us with. Oh 
Oh yeah, one last thing. Before I went to fight the Loyal Three, I found an outbreak of Poliwag and found the shiny really fast. You're, you're joking. You're joking. Dude, that was so quick. Oh, that is definitely the shiny, right? Yes, shiny Poliwag. A shiny Poliwag was perfect because now I can evolve it into Poliwhirl. Add a King's Rock to the Poliwhirl, have a friend of mine trade it over to me to get my final shiny Pokemon. Oh my God, look at her. Now the shiny Politoed is mine. Let's go. Now that you guys know, it's time to battle Kirin because Kirin is not playing around. Kirin sends out an interesting Pokemon, Shift Tree. Well, I send out Microwave. Both of us are dark types, but clearly I have the advantage here with Flamethrower. Yeah, that's right. Get out of here, Shift Tree. After Shift Tree was down, Poliwrath was out and ready. I sent out Zane to use an Air Slash, doing not as much damage. Flinch it, flinch it, flinch it. Yes, let's go. Dude, Zing is goaded with the flinches. Hyrule. Oh, it was so close. There's no way. I am not risking it. We are doing a bug buzz. Oh my god, two flinches in a row, Zing is goaded. Zing is just amazing. Who needs a Yon Mega, am I right? Kieran's next Pokemon is Probopass. So I sent out Beast to use Brick Break on a four times weak Pokemon, but it lives on Sturdy. It uses Power Gem, but isn't enough to take Beast out. I named him Beast for a reason, but now it's getting intense with Yon Mega as his fourth member. Obviously I sent out Coco to take care of Yon Mega, what am I, an idiot? Oh, hit him, Coco, hit him. No, you did not. No, Coco, why? You have no idea what you just caused, Coco. I almost had no answer to what to send out against Yon Mega because Yon Mega's special attack is super high. One wrong move and this will all be over. Don't kill us. Oh, 10 HP. You look with flamethrower. Where is your doctor, coward? Yon Mega's out, and here comes my top five favorite Pokemon, Gliscor. Gliscor is pretty strong, so this will be a rough one. You're definitely slower than. Why did you use Harden? What the heck are you doing? Aerial Lace. Oh, we take it. Let's go. With Gliscor out of the way, Diplin had no chance against Cookie. And with that, we won Ogre Pond. I didn't want it as much in the first place, but since you want it, now I do. Kieran's Pokemon were so strong, but not strong against the OG. But Ogre Pond is prepared and ready to battle. But first, one last evolution wouldn't hurt. I didn't forget about this guy. Y'all don't gotta worry. I put Balls and Pinky Woo into our team to prepare for this legendary fight against Ogre Pond. Cause Ogre Pond is so strong and I don't know if we can make it, but I'm gonna do my best. Oh man, here we go. Oh my God, dude, that is scary as heck. Fine Whip, what the heck is wrong with you? Oh my gosh. Balls, what the heck is up with you, bro? Dude, Balls is actually so strong. All right, that's the first one down. Oh boy, it's the water type one. I'm gonna have to go to Frigid, bro. Oh, ah, you can't use it because our ability is water absorb. Too bad for you. Oh my gosh, that does decent damage. Okay, the growth is scary. I will admit that. How is Frigid faster than this guy? Oh, oh my God, we tank it so good. Frigid, come on. You can do another. Yes, the second one is down. Oh, now it's the rock type one. All right, Pinkwoo. I feel like you can tank this, bro. Oh, it's using it. Yes, you can. Oh, oh my God. I forgot about the vine whip. Yo, that's insane. Thank you. Oh, I'm so happy that you're my first partner. Oh my gosh. The last and final mask. Oh my God. Yeah, I am definitely wis willow wisping it for sure. That growth is going to be a problem. Microwave flamethrower! I have squashed you like bug! Let's go! And with that, we defeat Ogre Pond and all of its four terrestrial forms, catching it in the friend ball. As I thought it was all over, Carmen sent over a messenger again, and he was not happy about it. But the real final battle starts now, with Carmine challenging us. And she wants me to use Ogre Pond? This battle forces me to add Ogre Pond to the team. So that means I'll only be able to use five Pokemon against Carmine. If we lose here, it's over. 
Our mind sends out Mightyana against Pinky Wu. It intimidates us and uses how to up its attack. Which, again, I don't see how it'll help her in this situation. But Mighty Anna uses Crunch the next turn with the crit! My heart almost stopped noticing how lucky I was for Pinky Wu to be alive. Pinky Wu is a damn soldier, and I'm an idiot. She then sends out her Morpeko, while I send out Cookie. And this Morpeko has Seed Bomb for some reason. We still take it out, but it could have been worse if we didn't. Now Carmine sends out her Sinistra. Her Pochigai's finally evolved! So I finally get to see the Sinistra! No! Balls! No! I totally forgot about Scold! And of course I would let a Pokemon die in the end! Carmine sends out her Ninetales. And to gain redemption, I brought Coco. You failed me last time, Coco. Now is redemption. Let's go, Coco! Alright, I forgive you. With Carmine's final Pokemon being Levani, it was obvious that we have won the battle against Carmine without any casualties. Yay. And with that, we defeated the Teal Max DLC with shiny Pokemon from the Johto region. Now the question is, can you do it? Of course you can, if you aren't dumb like me. But if you want to see some cool content, Click this video right here. I know YouTube's recommending it to ya. Come on, you guys gotta watch it. Please do, I can't stop dancing until you click on the video, please.